After 15 years of seeing Jelly Roll live, I think I'm good. Yeah. Not apologetic. Nonsense. Last week, I went to Jelly Roll show in Springfield. Full disclosure, this was like a day and a half after Shadow passed. Rest in peace. I wasn't in the mood, you know. So I did all the math where I didn't have to watch the openers or anything. Figured out when he'd be there. And basically got there about 15 minutes before he went on. I did not stay for his whole set. Really? The dynamics are changing. They've been changing. I've just been ignoring them. But, you know, I first saw Jelly Roll when probably the first time I booked them, which was like 2010, maybe 2011. Most people, you know, everyone's the biggest Jelly Roll fan in the world right now. But most people don't know anything about Jelly Roll's music even five years ago. Back then... <coughs> Jelly Roll was the straight dope boy, but insightful hood rapper. It was great. Like, I remember when I got the first CD, I can't remember if it was Therapeutic Music 3 or Deal or No Deal, but I was like, something's different about this dude, you know? And since then, I would say this whole, whatever, 14-year period, Jelly Roll's been my favorite artist. These last two or three shows have been after his mainstream switch, right? And you really see that in the crowd. And you see it in his performance. You know, back in the day, he was like fighting people and going crazy. <laughs> and his shows were just buck wild. And then I can remember the first time I saw him in front of tens of thousands of people was in Arkansas at the Walmart Amphitheater. I just couldn't help myself. Like, I'd walk up to people and, you know, wait for them to all say the same. He's my favorite artist, and I love everything he's done. And I'll be like, well, uh, what's your favorite therapeutic music? Or, you know, do you like Sobriety Sucks or Addiction Kills More? You know, just simple questions. And, you know, nine out of ten of them have no idea what that is. And it's a weird dichotomy because I've seen it go as far as me playing old school Jelly Roll for people who say Jelly Roll's their favorite artist and then telling me to turn that shit off. <laughs> but yeah, Jelly Roll made that decision at a certain point to jump into the mainstream, which was strange for all of his old fans because this was an artist who's yelling, you know, underground to like D.I.E. type shit, you know? You know, a lot of people don't even know what underground means. And by underground, I don't mean he hadn't made it. I mean, he made a, a conscious choice to do a certain type of music and appeal to a certain fan base. You know, like his big come up was through like Tech Nines fans and, and Juggalos. You know, that that's really what that big push was. And then... Like, I can't even keep up with the headlines from Jelly anymore. You know, he's on, like, The Voice or American Idol. <laughs> he's on The View. At that last show, I got pink ink all over me. At that last show, not the the one before last, it was all, like, ages. I mean, you saw people from 6 to 76, you know. This show last week, it was 10,000 people, okay? And for some reason, they had it lit up like it was... You were about to play basketball in there. Where'd you go to Springfield? Uh, it was, it was called people. the Great Southern Bank Arena. See, and that's another thing. These last two shows are the only concerts I've ever been to that were seated. You know, and that's awkward. You know, maybe to some people that's the only shows they've saw or saw, but you're just, you know, it's it's weird. You're allowed to stand up. I understand that, but you're also <laughs> like confined to your seat. You know, yeah. you're not in the aisles, you're not mingling with people, you're not getting in the midst of the shit, you're just there, you know. So that that is a strange thing. Yeah, pay extra for that. Yeah. This last show, there was no standing. Like, it was just, everything was seated. So he comes out, and I'm, you know, we're pretty good, we're about 10 feet from the stage or so, you know. First song comes on, everything's great. Second song comes on, and he plays, I'm not Okay. And I'm just in there, like, sobbing, you know, because of, of, of Shadow. And I start looking around at the people, and you could see everyone, you know. I think I was, if I wasn't the youngest person there, I was one of the youngest. So it was like the, the age range at this show was like 35 to 75, it was crazy, and it was majority. Like, if you told me this was a ZZ Top's farewell tour, I would have <laughs> believed you by the crowd, you know. Mm -hmm. And Jelly Roll's kind of playing to that now. So he's doing a lot of covers, a lot of old hip. Like, half the show was, like, him doing old hip-hop or old rock covers. But, like, the hip-hop covers he's doing, 
he's like trying to appeal to the mainstream audience. So he's doing like cruising down the street in my six foot, you know, like he's not doing like real hip hop songs. You know what I'm saying? He's doing the things that the mainstream would, uh, would want. And this is the first time I can say this. I did not enjoy the show. At one point he goes, any of my old school fans in here, you know, every person cheered. Right. But (laughs) so he's like, I'm about to play some stuff deep from the archives, deep from the vaults. And he played uh, Bottle and Mary Jane, I think it was. So that's like five years ago. You know what I'm saying? So that's the deep in the vaults. But I think he's kind of locked himself into a position where he can only play these new, more pop style songs. You know, he has become like the industry's darling. You know what I mean? Everybody loves Jelly. He's the sweetest guy in the world. You know, Joe Rogan's talking about how great he is. Uh, You know, Martha Stewart is talking about how great he is. (laughs) If I had grandparents, they'd be talking about how great he is. What sucks? Pretty sure Eminem like used the Duncan Hook of "Save Me" or something on one of his. Yeah, he actually he used the first verse of "Save Me" as the hook for his song. Yeah, no, he's getting and believe me, I think Jelly Roll deserves every bit of success he gets. And I think if this is the road he wants to go down, I'm still going to support him. You know, I'm still going to buy the disc. I'm still going to do all that. But it is weird because before this, Jelly Roll was very controversial and polarizing figure. But now that he's pulling from the same fan base as like Taylor Swift fans, he's completely cancelable. You know what I mean? All it's going to take is pulling up an old video or him saying something real. You know he's got to bite his tongue now. He can't talk mm-hmm. like he used to, you know. Have you listened through the new record, uh, Beautifully Broken? Yet. See, mine just came in the mail uh, a few days ago, and I've made it through it. It's great. It's a good record, you know. Like, uh, musically, I I don't care whether Jelly Roll's doing trap shit or insightful stuff or country or, or whatever, you know. I support the music. I think the music's great. I just really hate the fans now. I hate dealing with mainstream fans I hate their bullshit, you know, because everyone has a story similar to mine, except they're all lying. You know, they're like, I've listened to them for 15 years. And it's like, you know, they'll say they went to a live. They're like someone local. They'll say they went to a live show 12 years ago. It's like, no, you didn't. Because I was organizing those shows and I know where they were at. You know what I'm saying? Because we've seen Jelly Roll everywhere from, you know, five people to 10,000 people. It's like in town. Well, there's like 12 people at the show. <clears throat> oh, here in Joplin? Yeah, when we fucking bullshitted with them afterwards. Yeah, that was a crazy one because it was just me, you, and a few other people that came with us and I think one random girl and that was the whole show. What was crazy though is on that tour, like two nights later, he played St. Louis and sold it out. So that was when he was really starting to make his buzz before he kind of s- switched genres but it was like little pockets of the country that were taking notice before the whole thing. Like, I believe he said after the show that he had to cancel his California dates or something because they only sold like two tickets, something like that, which is always crazy. But I thought, you know, Jelly Roll was great from, you know, now till, you know, when we were like 20 years old, prank calling them in the middle of the night, (laughs) you know, I support everything the guy does. It's just, he's, he's not making it easy on me. You know what I mean? Where he's on The View and and stuff like that from an artist who, you know, yelled, fuck the mainstream for a decade. Bricks. Yeah. Yeah. But but like I say, I think I think everything (coughs) he's doing is great. It's just I don't think I'm going to go to the shows for a while. The whole format, everything's changed and it's just not the type of show I want to go to. I saw about an hour 10 or so of his set. And I probably only saw like six of his songs. So it was a lot of talking, a lot of audience work. And like I say, it was mostly senior citizen old ladies. And none of them know how to use their cell phone. And that was endlessly (laughs) infuriating to me because they would have the brightness like as bright as it could possibly go, right? So they'd be in like the row in front of me or to the side of me. And they're like this. And then I am just freaking catching strays <laughs> from their brightness. Flashes going off everywhere. But what what he did do that was cool, though, is they they built this, like, framework of a house, which was out of some sort of piping. And they pumped something flammable through it. And all of a sudden, when they introduce him, that little house structure just catches on fire. And then he goes inside of it and does his first song. 
That was super cool. Did you prefer the straight gangster gangster jelly or the in between like you know like i say addiction kills era or like what we're into now with like whistlet chapel and yeah i definitely go with the older stuff see i think prime jelly is right there in the middle like 2000 yeah, addiction kills was great 17 to 2020 you know but i'd say if you know if he doesn't have like a heart attack or something he's got a long career ahead of himself yeah. You know, he looked like he had lost some weight at the show. Still fucking giant, but, you know, it looked like he had lost some weight. And I do think what's funny is, like, the genre thing, which I think is worth talking about. Around, like, when they did Dead Man Walking, I think it was, they tried to promote it to uh, alt-rock stations, you know, to get, uh, you know, like, a number one that way. And they didn't have much success. So they took the same song. I mean, they were able to chart, but they were, like, number 30, number 40. So they took that same song, Dead Man Walking, changed. See, you can I can upload any song I want and put in any genre I want, and then it will be put in into that genre for like if it if it charts, if it whatever. So all they did was take that song, change the genre from alternative rock to country, and then he got his first number one. So like the whole jelly roll being country thing is a bit of a facade. You know what I mean? He's just doing the same soul music he's always done, but there was an old saying back in the day, if you're a pop star and you're not having success, add a little twain and guitar to it and call yourself country because there's less competition there. So the people behind Jelly really <coughs> pushed that country status, and that's how they're able, like right now, his uh, Beautifully Broken is number one on country radio, yep. number one on the country charts. So they were real smart to do that because if you're number one in any genre, it's going to open up a lot of doors for you that he wouldn't have had opened up if he was number 40 in the rock genre. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't even consider the music country. I consider it its own like soul hybrid thing. But I want to hear Jelly spit again. You know what I mean? Because he was never the best like technical rapper, but he was great. You know what I'm saying? So I encourage anyone who's listening who don't know about it, go grab Deal or No Deal. Go grab the first three or four therapeutic musics, you know. Gambling on a white boy. Yeah, gambling on a white boy. The stuff, uh, what's weird. The collection. You know, I went with my dad to the show. And, uh, you know, he loves Jelly Roll's newer stuff, probably about the last eight years or so. But now he's been on Pandora and he's heard like a bunch of the stuff Jelly and Lil White did. He said, why didn't you ever tell me about that little white fella? Burn me up some CDs. So I'm like, dude, you're not going to like it. And so we'll see how that one goes. But that's why I buy the hard copies. I rip them on my PC and I give the disc to my dad, you know. So there we go. But yeah, it. I wasn't in the right mind state for the show. So that may have ruined it for me. But I don't think I would have got much enjoyment anyway. So I'm going to continue to support him through the merchandise, through the music. But I'm, I'm just not going to live shows. Plus, it was like 250 bucks a ticket anyways. <laughs> Fucking insane. His shirts there were 45 bucks. Right. What in the fuck, Jelly? I know how much it costs to make a Gildan t-shirt with print on it. <laughs> At the last show, they were 30, 30, 35, and I went ahead and bought one at the previous show. But no, no. I wait for stuff to go on sale on his website, get him for like six bones, and that'll be that. But yeah, I wish him all the success in the world. If you see my truck zipping on by, it's probably bumping jelly, but you ain't going to see me at the shows no more. Any final words? Nope. All right. <laughs> Not apologetic. Nonsense.